the sermon per se is the word of the cross. The word of the cross. Uh, we are living days that more and more the cross of the Calvary is underlooked uh, by the humankind. I came from uh, Watville, Waiteville now, and I told to the congregation of brothers and sisters there that people these days, they prefer that Jesus of the baby Jesus, the Catholic Jesus in the cross of the Calvary. They prefer the Jesus of the Jehovah Witness, a Jesus that is weak, that has no power, that has no relevant relevance. That is not God made man. They undermined the word Emmanuel, that means God made man. They prefer a Jesus that it's that is not that it doesn't move, he has no power. Not the biblical Jesus, and if he's a biblical Jesus, is a Jesus that is in a book, a historical book, the Bible is old, it's part of the history. So the, 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 the cross of the Calvary is becoming like old-fashioned, per se. And it became a tradition, part of religion, but more than ever, it's becoming a uh, tradition. People are celebrating Easter, eventually not because of the acknowledgement of the cross of the Calvary, acknowledgement of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, but eventually because it's part of a tradition, like Christmas. It's... Uh, hypocritical moments like our birthdays it can be like an hypocritical moment also I can acknowledge that many times if people have to love me they must love me the whole year not just in one specific day I cannot be important in one day of the year Jesus cannot be important in Christmas in Easter in isolated events that then we say okay Jesus is this uh, Important, important person, but do we acknowledge him all the year, every day of the year, or is just uh, sometimes in some isolated events? More and more the people are running away from the message of the gospel, where the center is, or the core is the cross of the Calvary. People run away from the cross of the Calvary, the message of the cross. I was sharing with the brothers and sisters there that it's easy for a prosperity God, for a pastor that preaches prosperity gospel to preach about prosperity. Because also it's easy for the person to receive the message of the prosperity gospel because it, it becomes a mindset that I just have to give in order for me to receive. I just have to give in order for me to be included in the congregation and accepted. So then the pastor is not really concerned if the person lives a sinful life, uh, uh, if the person is a person that does stuff hidden and, and that people don't know and it's not important that what is important even for the person is that I come to church I tithe I contribute to the, con to the church and I have my days that I join the congregation mm. and apparently it looks like that I am saved mm. and I go to heaven but what defines heavenliness it's the cross of the Calvary the way you accept the way you are able to discern the meaning of the cross of the Calvary. Well, I am fully aware that the cross is the core of the gospel, no matter what. We will see that in the end, that you cannot remove the cross out of the gospel. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18 says, For the word of the cross is fully for those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. This is my, I, I usually don't preach much in this biblical verse, in the scripture, but to be honest, this is my favorite uh, verse of the Bible. For the word of the cross is fully for those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. And we find here, in my point one, two groups and two people. Two people, two types of people. People, as there is the South African people, the Portuguese people, the the, the Mozambican people, the French people. And beyond two people, it's two groups of people. Okay? So the first group is those that are perishing and those that are being saved. And uh, these are two different kinds of people because apparently some are dying, 
some are being saved, some are being are gaining life. And because I have a, a, a bit of a revelation here now, together with another that I had in the previous church that I went, I'm going to jump to my point two, that is, are being saved. My point two is, are being saved. You know, because I, I discern that in the end of the day, are being saved. The apostle doesn't say, um, for those that perish, to, or, to us that are saved. He speaks about for those that are perishing and for those that are being saved. It means that there is movement here. There is something that is happening. It's not that I perish. I go through life perishing. Bit by bit, moving away from God. Being separated. And we are not fully separated. When we born, we are fully connected to the Creator. Every child. That's why Jesus said, let the children come to me because from them it's the kingdom of God. Because of that. Because they born already saved. Because they born with such an innocence that they are connected to the Creator. And as they grow, they start moving away from the Creator. And they start becoming sinful people. Like you and I. And that's why a child of a pastor does not, it doesn't have to be saved. My kids, they need to fight for their, their salvation. Elias is already in age and Josh is entering there too, that they will have to fight for their salvation. They already received Jesus as their Lord and Savior, but they need to find themselves with God. My function in the church does not save them. My salvation is not the salvation of my wife. And uh, so it says that are being saved. It means that salvation, it's a daily thing. It's a daily struggle. It's not today. And it came to my conclusion that that's why it is not about I'm evangelist or even a pastor with, with, with anoint, fully anointed to, to invite people to receive Jesus. Um, Billy Graham was an evangelist and he could, by the, by the anointing of the Spirit, he could pers persuade the people to receive Jesus as Lord and Savior. But in the end of the day, it was not just that act of receiving Jesus when they go to the front. And that's why if you see a marathon or a campaign of uh, um, Billy Graham, you find that he invites the people to receive Jesus as Lord and Savior, and then after the prayer, he tells them, now you can go to the sideways, and you will find people, some guys, some women that work with me, and they will give you some information for you to read. Because he knew that that is, that is not it. But you, many times, you think that this is it. I made the prayer. I joined the ministry. I serve. I do this and I do that. It's not about what you do, it's about what he did. Finish. It's not even about what he does, it's what we did. And what he did is in one action. He died in the cross of the Calvary in order to rise again from dead. But we think that is what, all about what I can do, what I do. What can I do for him? He doesn't need nothing for us to do for him. And what we do, Anybody can do it. It's a privilege we have. Sometimes it looks like that we, 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 we revenge in God. Our, 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 our stories and our problems. Then we revenge in God. Now I won't do it. You can't revenge in God. Because there is nothing we can do for him. And I'm not being preaching under the yoke of hypocrisy. or Because I want to. No. It is what it is. I'm fully aware of it. There is nothing you can do for him. How can I do, what can I do for the creator of the universe? What can I really do for the creator of the universe? What can I really give to him? What is it that can impress him so much? What, how can I impress God? The Bible says you, there is only one way to please God is if you have faith. Without faith you cannot please. So that concludes me that if I have faith I can please him. Faith is what? It's when I depend on him. I'm undiscovered for, for everything. So as, 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 as much as people are being saved, fighting for their salvation, as much as people that are perishing are dying. Brother Tinus gave his testimony in this church that we came now, and he said something very, very interesting. 
he quote he quoted that along his testimony that every day he was feeling his feet hot because he knew that he was heading to hell so he knew his feet was hot every single day using drugs and and doing all those stuff that he and us used to do and he said that he couldn't even understand why his feet was hot then when he came to the lord he understood that his feet was hot because was he was heading to hell i believe that this could be his perception and the, the perception the way god have to speak with him and to show him why he was in that stage that he feels his feet hot because he was heading to hell and he said that god came in took him out exactly in the gates of hell god came and took him and god came and took you and i from hell Amen. so for us that we are being saved by the day it is the power of god what the word of the cross it is the power of god the power the dynamo the dynamic like an explosion isaiah 29 14 We will go there later, but the Apostle Paul quotes, uh, okay, I have to go there now. Okay, Isaiah 29, 14 says, Therefore, behold, I will again do wonderful things with these people, with wonder upon wonder, and the wisdom of their wise men shall perish, and the discernment of their discerning men shall be hidden. The Apostle Paul quotes Isaiah. Also, we will see when he quotes this verse. To get some Old Testament back up as he was writing to a congregation with a good group from Israel. A good group from a good group from of Hebrews and also a good group of Greeks. But let me read for you where you will, how I'm quoting this. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20 to 25 says, Where is the one who is wise? One question. Where is the scribe? Second question. Where is the debater of this age? Third question. Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? Fourth question. For since in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom. In, it pleased God through the fully of what we preach to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs and Greeks seek wisdom. But the, we preach Christ crucified an obstacle to Jews and the fully to Gentiles. But to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than men and the weakness of God is stronger than men. I'm really sorry, but I prepared this message now. And I forgot to put the verse 19 of 1 Corinthians 1. Can somebody read for me? Yeah. It says that you will annihilate the. It will destroy the wisdom of the wise. Exactly. Can you read it all, 19? It will destroy the wisdom of the wise, the intelligence of the intelligent. I will frustrate. Exactly. Amen? Amen. That's why I came then with Isaiah 29 14, mm. because it, 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 the, some of the. Biblical translation says, as it is written. Ne? Maybe your Bible says that. As it is written. And then he quotes, I will destroy the intelligence of the wise and then I'll frustrate. What what is it? What, where did he took this from? He took from Isaiah 29, 14. Therefore, behold, I will again do wonderful things with these people, with wonder upon wonder, and the wisdom of their wise men shall perish, and the discernment of their discerning men shall be hidden. So the Apostle Paul quotes Isaiah in the verse 19 in order to get some Old Testament backup, as he was writing to a congregation with a good group of Israel people, Hebrews, and also a good group of Greeks, that together they were continually in strife and dissension, dividing the body of Christ. What divides the body? It's the... This is what was dividing the, body, the, the church of Corinth. Of Corinthians was the speaking too much, gossiping, this and that. He has, I don't, 
he, why is there, why I'm not here, why he, he, he can, why I can't, stuff like that, stuff like that. I think you know what I'm saying. Eh? That doesn't happen here. Here we all get along, nobody gossips about nobody, here nobody speaks in the back of anybody. I think we all, here we are all holified by the Holy Spirit and we don't, we don't face any trial and tribulation about this matter. We are all in, 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 in a good relationship with each other. So they were continually in strife and in dividing the body of Christ. On the other hand, this is what I want you to understand with, 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 the, with, the, idiotic, with the idiotic way of, of gossiping and speaking and what what, is that the cross unifies the body. And that's why Paul embraced the gospel of the cross, giving the cross a, pros a proper value. The cross, Jesus even died with the open arms. Many theologists, they say that the theology for it is because he wants to embrace the mankind. He wants, he's inviting everybody to come. And it, it, it has a certain logic, né? because at the end of the day, he dies with the open arms. And, and he invites us all to be united. Uh, when I joined Rimar with Rita, I came from a Presbyterian church, okay? I was, I was a, a fully uh, grown Presbyterian. I was a, a person that the statement of my faith was according with the Presbyterian do doctrine. We are all evangelic, but you have the Baptist, many, many Christians, they don't know that. Even Christians, evangelics, they don't know that. In the evangelic world, you have the Baptists, the Pentecostal, the Presbyterian, you have. So we were, we were Presbyterians. And the Presbyterian church is very theological. They, they embrace in a deep study of the word of God. And when I joined Rimar, I, I, I joined with Elias. And Elias was about to be baptized in that Presbyterian church. In Rimar, we are Pentecostal. We believe in the gift of the Spirit, in prophecy, this and that. Even though that the church I came with Rita, it, it was called a renovated Presbyterian church because we also believed in the gift of the Spirit, the prophecy, and then and then. We did believe in that. But we also believed in that Presbyterian church that the children would be, could be baptized as a kids. And the pastor that was there taught us very well with the Bible, with, with the theological fact that, yes, the child can be baptized as a child. And I'm not going to argue that, of course, because I'm a pastor in this Pentecostal congregation that also has a very solid fundamental to say that they cannot be baptized. And that, for me, is enough, which is what? A child does not have a conscience to decide if he can be baptized or not. Yet, that, that Presbyterian Church has also a very strong argument. So people ask me, of course, so João, now how are you going to do it? Because you go to, you go to, to, to Rimar and you can't baptize the leaders now because the doctrine is totally different. The doctrine is totally the opposite of what you believe. I said, no, it's not about what I believe because what is uniting, what is uni uniting me to Rimar it is not a doctrine of if I can be baptized or if I can't, if uh, I celebrate the Easter or not. The Presbyterians, they are, they, are, they are baptized like the Catholics. It's a bit of water on top of the head and it's done. The children. So it's not about the amount of water. It's about your heart. So the, and I said to the person, it's not about the baptism. What unifies me to remind is the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. So if... For me, it's enough to know that the blood of Jesus Christ unifies me, and one day when the leaders have to be baptized, he will be baptized. Mm -hmm. And it will be, today I know even that he will be baptized with the consciousness of what is mm -hmm. to be baptized all about. So what unifies the body of Christ is the cross of the Calvary. And this is what Paul was struggling, and even, even uh, uh, especially with this church of Corinth or the church of Galatia, he was also struggling because it was always 
these arguments. In Acts of the Apostles, you found that the, 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 the Spirit of God gave the direction to, to, for the Apostles to, to, to start the first deacons, the first seven deacons of the church, under that yoke, the yoke of the division of the church. The Hebrew women were fighting, the Hebrew widows were fighting with the Greek widows because of, because of the food parcels that they will get. Because they get much more than I, or because they get meat and I don't, or because they get milk and I don't. They were fighting. So what, they, what, they, what was happening? The apostles, they weren't focused in the message of the gospel. They could not focus. They have to be doing everything. And that's why also, also our congregation have deacons in order for the... the, the the, the heavy laden that is on my shoulders can be split by the people in order for, the, for me to be helped to. So they made the, the deacons for that. For the apostles then they can focus in the message of God to prepare the message and to give the message to the people without all those uh, problems that they were facing. So Paul gives the proper value to the cross of the Calvary. Conclusion. Four questions the Apostle Paul asked them on when we read 1 Corinthians 1, 20 to 25, that he, sa he starts saying, where is the one who is wise? Uh, where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not made foolish the wisdom of the world? I read this millions of times already. I could never understand why he does such questions to them. Why? What does he want to, to show them? What does he want them to learn? These questions are not easy to answer, I wrote. And then I put a comma. Because you need a revelation to understand why he does them. Yet the answer is that what he was trying to say is that they are all dead. They are nowhere to be found. They all died. That's why he says, where is the wise? Because Corinthians or Corinth, Corinth was a cosmopolitan city with uh, lots of wise people. The Greeks will be there. It will be like, uh, maybe if it was in South Africa, maybe it will be like Santon, which is a, 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 a city that's it's growing, it's expanding. There is lots of, the money moves a lot there. Maybe another country will be, maybe in Portugal will be Lisbon, my, my, my hometown. Maybe it will be Lisbon, where there is more movement, where there is, so, he asks, where is the wise? Where is it? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Because there was too much debaters on those days. That debate in places about the existence of man. Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? And he made foolish the wisdom of the world. These questions are not easy to answer, yet the answer is that they all died. They are nowhere to be found. And Christ... He rose from death. This is what he wants to tell them. If you st continue reading the book, you will find Paul that is pretty much frustrated with them, done with them. They were very problematic. The, I was hearing Pastor Philip preaching, uh, hosting, and then, um, uh, in, and then after I preached, he, he also ministered to the people, and then he opened his heart a little bit to me, how difficult the congregation was. And I said, you know what, welcome to the club. You are in Whiteville, in an African congregation, and you have too much problems, and the people create too much problems. I am in the hill near Rosettenville, with a more a church, more more with a class of people much different because we are all we are all kinds here: colors, white, blacks, Indians, this and that, all types of people, nations, Portuguese, Angolans. Spanish, we even had here Uruguayans before, all types of people, and yet I can still deal with the same problem. But then when you look to Corinth, the church of Corinth, then when you look at the church of Galatia, the Apostle Paul was struggling with the same. Churches that he found, churches that he was the one that started the church, that started that congregation, and he had problems with them all along. And they could never understand the Apostle Paul. Because it takes you to be spiritual in order for you to understand the spiritual things. If your flesh is more revived than your spirit, then when somebody speaks to you from the spirit, 
with the spirit you can't understand the spirit because there is no interaction there is no understanding because we are not in the same page I'm speaking A and you speak B I'm speaking C and you speak D and then we cannot understand each other he rose from dead he went to hell and got back with the keys of life to grant you and I the opportunity of redemption this is what he went there to do. I even said today that he went there to, to, to see the way. Because there is many people that he take them straight from hell. I believe that we were that class of people. We were that class of people that we were already there. Our names were written in the gate and we were already ready to enter in the gate. So Jesus went there and took us from there and brought us up. So the functionality of the cross is to kill but it's to kill in order to bear life. To suck life in order to give it back to you and to give it back to me. Therefore, I think that Paul was speaking to himself when he says, For the word of the cross is fully to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. I think he was also speaking to himself. Because he was part of those that were that was being perished. Now he includes himself to us who are being saved. He includes himself to us. He, then, he does not dare to also say, for me that I'm, I'm being saved and for you, for me that I'm saved and for you that I'm being saved. No, he could not. You know why he could not? Because he had, we cannot forget that he had that thorn in the flesh that make him lump all the time. And understand that he's weak. And understand that he's miserable. And understand that he's... Three steps behind the will of God. Three steps behind the grace of God. That he does need to go to the feet of Jesus at a daily basis. Because that thorn in the flesh was bothering him. So when he, when he speaks this, when he writes this, I'm pretty sure that he knew what he was saying. He was one of those that needed to see the light. To see the cross in order to be away from the change of religion, the change of the law. Because this, his change of the Apostle Paul was nothing less than religion and the law. He was legalistic. Everything was by the law. Everything was uh, by the chains of religion. I think it's the most powerful weapon that the devil has. And he succeeded very well. He has a text of success with religion. Very good. We have five religions in the world, even though that many people, they think that we have a lot. No, we have five. Five. Then from these ones, you have sort of ramifications. But you have five. Reincarcionism, Christianity of the story, Christianity, historical Christianity. You have the, 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 the Islam, and you have the Judaism. Five. Then out of these come all the ramifications. But you see, Five was enough. Five is enough. Because even with our Christianity, because there is the historical Christianity and the, Christian of, and the Christianity of the story. We are the Christians of the story. The historical Christianity is the old Christianity that passed away back there. Because the Catholic Church was revived at one stage. But then it froze when they rebuked the Holy Spirit. So we are the Christians of the story, that continually we are making story, continually we, are, we live under the yoke of the Spirit of God. But even with us, with, with us evangelicals, the, 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 the devil can, can work with us very well concerning the religion. Like it's done, it's enough. I'm doing what I need to do, and I'm, I'm going where I need to go, and I'm, I'm in the church. Does this moment save you and I? Can you say, can you have the audacity to say, if I die now, I go to heaven? Are you sure that you go to heaven? Are you sure that you're born again? How can I know that I'm born again, Pastor? Can you explain to me? I need to know. Jesus says very clearly. He, he, st he sets the, set, the standard. And the standard is, by the fruits, you will know them. By the fruits, you will know them. Because the, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, Herodians, Hellenians, they were the religious classes of Israel that they, they were following all the steps. 
as we in the church follow all the steps. Discipleship, Sunday service, new, 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 a different clothes, a different approach, a different language, a different way. I change a little bit here. I know a few other Louis, a few this. So I, I'm engaging with everything. And Jesus says, it's not about that. By the fruits, you will know them. If you bear fruit, you will be known by Jesus that this is, this is the one. When he fell from the horse, he saw a risen Christ out of the cross. When Paul fell off the horse, he saw a living Christ and not a, a, a risen Christ out of his cross. Death was defeated, chains were broken, and Saul became Paul. Then I did a little research that I was wondering, and then it result, and then God guided me. And then I understood why God guided me to understand what it means Saul and Paul. Because Saul, it means the one who was much desired. The one who was insistently asked. People that asked for Saul at all times. In other words, or the one who was obtained through prayers. In other words, somebody that was in a position of be seen. Appreciated. Because if the one who was much desired, it means that it's, it, it's someone that everybody wants to be around with. Then he became somebody, somebody that nobody wants to be with him. When you and I, we become people that people don't want to be with us, I think we are in a good way. When I hear here and there, even that it, it might bring me a bit of sorrow, that this one doesn't like me, the other doesn't like me, nye, 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 I'm not welcome, da, 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 da. I say to myself, you know what, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. The one who was much desired, the one who was intensely asked, people asking for him, and everybody wants to be with him. In other words, Paul means small, or of low stature. The name Paul comes from the Latin Paulus, from Paulo with double L, which means small or low. It came about to a Roman nickname when there was no surnames and physical characteristics were used to be to name people such as Clever or Bruno. They will look to you and they will name you according with your physical characteristics. If you were strong, fat, if you were tall, short. So it means small, low stature. Was the way of God to saying, you know what, now you lower slower lower down john the baptist said in john 3 30 he must increase he must increase but i must decrease in portuguese says it is important for me in the translation in portuguese says it is important for me to decrease in order for him to increase it's important for me to, to in short, in order for him to grow. In other words, the name changing of Paul was not in vain. But we do have difficulty to be the last. We have, difficulty, we have difficulty to be the last. We have difficulty to be hidden. And the cross is relevant with Jesus and not with you and I. The cross is a high point where everybody can be seen where Jesus was sinned. Even though that people undermine the cross, as I said, there is historical uh, men that wrote about, about the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. They weren't believers, they weren't Christians, they weren't nothing. They just wrote about it. They wrote about a Jesus that was crucified. But we have difficulty on being hidden. We have difficulty. Now, I'll be, in the meantime that I was preparing my sermon, I have this habit of putting sermons and I'm hearing the sermons. And it's not that I'm going to um, preach the sermon, but just to... I won't even pay attention to what, what the, 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 the preacher is actually saying, but it's entering something. And, uh, and the preacher was, was, was saying that uh, we, we have difficulty in the church of, uh, you know, we think, we think that they, the, the task of being here in the pulpit, it's an easy task. 
started like that, this sermon. People think that it's, it's the best part is this one. Pastor Philip said the same there in, in the, in the, in the Wadeville, that it so, looks like that, this is it. I want to preach, I want to be in charge, I want to... Well, this is the most difficult part. This is the, the, the part with more responsibility. And you can't just bring the word in vain. You need to be the word that God gave you. And the church must hear the voice of God and, they must, and it must bear fruit in the life of the people. But in the end of the day, it looks like that this is the, the place where you, people like this place because it is where the people are sinned. As the cross of the Calvary was, was Jesus was sinned. So people, they don't like to be the last, they don't like to be hidden. I struggled with that too many years. I thought that serving God would be in the pulpit. I couldn't understand why I need to clean the chairs. The church I met Rita. I struggled so much, many times, cleaning the church, and I go on my knees praying and crying and frustrated because I couldn't understand why it must be me. I know how to preach already. Why can't I preach too? Why you have to be me cleaning the church? Why I have to be me attending the people and serving the people? Serving the tea and being in the kitchen, preparing everything. Why I should be one of the preachers? Why can't I be the preacher? The preachers do. I could not understand that that, that was a process. Mm -hmm. But then it became a process because if you don't run away from the process, the process will shape you. No matter if you agree with the process or not, the process will shape you. But at one stage of your life, you need to, to agree with the process. Because it, in a, at one stage of your life, if you don't agree with the process, the process won't shape you. Amen. It will delay you. It will pull you back. And that's why there is many in the church that they ask themselves, why I'm not moving? Why I'm not moving? Why I'm not uh, a living water that is moving? Why? Because the process is holding you back. You can't move because you don't accept the process. You don't accept the vision. You don't accept the teaching. You don't accept the discipleship. And we don't, when you don't accept, the process will, will pull you back. Because you can't move further because you did not, you did not uh, 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 overcome that process of your life that you need to face and you need to overcome. Amen. And that's why then you become stuck. And sometimes I tell people, I used to tell a brother, I used to say to a brother that was here with us, now we don't even know where is he, but I used to tell him, you know why? And that's why you, you see the people passing through. Woof, woof, woof. Brothers that you receive in the farm, and then you see them woof, passing through you like a bullet, moving and, and experiencing. Why? Because you are stuck. He used to ask me why I'm stuck. He at least had them. He was he was brave enough to ask me, but Pastor Juan, why I'm stuck? Why they grow and why they move and why do I see the people growing? He could use even the name of Kevin. I saw Kevin coming. He used to work with Kevin and now Kevin is a deacon. And, and why? Because the people, are not, the, the people are allowing the process to be the process. And we must not take the process out of the cross of the Calvary. Jesus endured the process in order for you and I to understand that the process we are into, it's a process that we need to embrace. That is why the cross of the Calvary does not resume just in the crucifixion. And also the society, they want to resume that to that. Just the crucifixion, finish and clap. No! The crucifixion starts in the moment that Judas kisses Jesus in the, in the, garden, in the garden of Gethsemane. And it says... It says in Hebrew you, that you kiss the Son of Man with a shack. A shack is the Hebrew word for kiss. Because he kissed Jesus in order to say to the soldiers, the one I kiss is the one that you must take it away. This is Jesus, the one I'm going to kiss. And he says, you betray the Son of Man with a kiss. That moment, that same very moment that he received that kiss of betrayal, that it looks like that it's a good thing. You know, that, that clap in the back. That it looks like that is a good one, but it's, it's the clap in the back to see if you can even fail. He received that, because he knows that you also received those. That is the process that you went through. You went through a process of endurance until the cross of the Calvary. And that's why he says, if you can, remove this from me this cup, but let your will be done. Because he knew what he was expecting. He was a God-made man. He could not, even that he wasn't using his power, he knew what was ahead of him. So he knew the betrayaling, end and end and end. And he saw everything. 
then the, the, the denial, oh, thank you, Tommy. Then the denial of Peter, and he saw everything. And he was, he had to endure the process of the crucifixion that started right there when he received that kiss. So, we are all beneficiaries of the cross, all of us. So, the word of the cross is the core of salvation. The core of the gospel. If, you will remove, if we remove the cross of the gospel, we'll turn into curse and no longer can be called gospel. Do you know that? It is written in the Bible. We will go there. If you take the cross out of the gospel, it is no longer a gospel. This is where the Mormons, the Jehovah Witnesses, and many other religions that believe in Jesus, but in their own way, this is where they fell. And this is where they fail. And this is where they lead their, their people to hell. Mm -hmm. Because they take away the cross. The power of the cross. Galatians chapter 1 verse 8 and 9 says. But even if we or an angel from heaven. Should preach to you a gospel. Contrary to the one we preach to you. Let him be accursed. What gospel? The gospel of the cross. As we have said before, so now I say again, if anyone is preaching to you a gospel contrary to the one you receive, let him be cursed. What is the gospel I received, the Apostle Paul? What he was always hitting the same subject was the cross, the power of the cross, the way the cross can set us free, the way the cross has a, a deep meaning. Even though that we don't celebrate this season as we celebrate the Christmas, for me, personally, the way I understand the Bible, at the, world, at the light of the Word of God, I see this season much more important than the Christmas. Because Easter, it's what it gives us life. The people of Israel are celebrating the Passover. Pesach in Hebrew, Passover, Pesach in Hebrew. The word Exodus, that is the second book of the Bible, it means exactly that, Passover, passing by, way out, exit. Look at the word Exodus. It means exit. Why? Because the people of Israel exit the Egypt to celebrate God in the wilderness. It was a Pesach, a Passover. So we celebrate the Passover because we were dead and now we are alive. We were spiritually dead and now we are alive. We, are, we were dead in our sins and trespasses and now we are alive. So he says, but even if you, if we or an angel from heaven should preach to you a gospel contrary to the one we preach to you, let him be a curse. He says, do not accept. Pastor Philip was complimenting me about the sermon that I, uh, that I uh, preached in his church. I didn't like it. I felt uncomfortable. That, was my, that is not my house, of course. Then they put the music when, while we preach. Then they, the translation. And then for me, it was too much confusion. But they love it and they love the, the sermon. But he said something to me. Which is, no, we need teaching like yours because you don't just preach. No, we need preaching like yours because you don't just preach. You teach the church. You teach the church. And I also believe that many churches, they are not growing and they are not getting mature because of that. Because people don't take time to, 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 to teach. I watch too many videos. I think it's obvious to many people. And it's not just videos of laughing. That is during the day when I have free time, I like to see the people falling in them. Falling from buildings, breaking their bones. I like to see, I don't know, I laugh. But it's not just those videos, especially in the night time and what, but I like to see videos that I can learn something. And there is this uh, thing in the YouTube, that, which is the, like the reels, which is sh very short videos. And if you see the way they preach in America, in South Africa, in Swaziland, in, Mozambique and everywhere, Brazil, you see the, the, the sermon. The sermon is all around empowering you and I, the empowering that you are good, you are the best, you will be rich, you will be this, you will be that. When the gospel should be focused on the cross and should be given the attention to Jesus 
and be and give the attention to the sacrifice he did in the cross. And we, when we have the attention on the cross of the Calvary, we will have also the attention in us, but looking to us, and then we underlook ourselves because we understand that we are not worthy of such a great salvation. I uh, had another personal encounter with Jesus in that church where I came from because God led me to a point that I was there in worship and praise. They have a beautiful worship and praise. This African Chwars, tra this African Chwars, the, the proper uh, uh, African church. I think Bonginos, Ezekiel, here in South Africa, that really vibrant Chwar, and broke me to a point that I felt all the misery that, that I was. And that I am many times. If, even, even though that you could think, oh, but you are a pastor, but my life is not easy. The Apostle Paul says that, you know what, I am the worst of the sinners. There is no one as bad as I am. And that should be the part of the Christian. The part of the Christian is not when I look at you and you are worse than I. It's when I look to myself and I know that even though that you are bad, I am worse than you. It makes it easy to look to people, even to look to a pastor, even to look to a brother that is ever in fight. It's easy for you to deal with him when you look and say, yeah, you are bad, but I'm worse. Come on. Because you know yourself, I know myself. Let's not hide ourselves behind. I can't hide myself behind the pulpit. I'm not the pulpit. I'm João. My name is João. And as João, I have my strives, my, my, my waves of, of that I struggle with myself. And you have yours. As we have said before, so now I say again, if anyone is preaching to you a gospel contrary to the one you receive, let him be accursed. He says you must curse them. You must just... Not even here. Why? Because we need the message of the gospel that you must discern if what you are hearing is good or bad. This is what me and Rita, we took from the church we came, this Presbyterian church, is that by the grace of God, uh, that pastor there, he taught us how to discern a good gospel. A gospel that is... And that's why it was easy for me to join Rimar, because then I was taught in other congregation, I was taught by seeing Rimar, for example, the sermons, that, that the, it's, it's the core of the gospel. It's, it's what, what I need to hear, not what I want to hear. So I used to hear, I was to be in that church already, and the last two years of that church, even though that I was one of the leaders going to church, and then, and then, and I used to hear every, at, the, at every Sunday, there's the sermons of the, that, that congregation, because it, it was the gospel. It was moving me to another level. And I could identify with, with them, and as, as I still can identify with them, because I'm part of this wonderful body of Christ that we are all included. Uh, and if we are not included, it's because we exclude ourselves, because you can't be included in some place that we exclude yourself. Sometimes it's not about people don't include you, it's that you don't include yourself. Sometimes we want to be included, but we exclude ourselves. You want to be included? Include yourself. You want to be part of something? So be part of something. Oh, nobody hear my opinion. Nobody wants to know about what I think. Did you ever talk, tell, talk to someone about your opinion, about what you think? That is when you include yourself. That is when you say, I want to be part of the body. I want to be a member of the body. Amen. Let's stand up.